Hey everyone, welcome to today to part two of Mont Saint Michel. Uh, today in this episode, we are going to start on working our way down the island here from the top uh, part with the abbey, and uh, yeah, starting on some of the uh, medieval uh, village part of this island and just some of the slopes and walkways that go up to the top that start from the bottom. But uh, yeah, so let's get into it. This part here is just the very back end of the abbey that is on top of the island. So this part here is something I considered just throwing in the very first episode. But I mean, I guess in hindsight, that probably would have been made a bit more sense. But I left it in this one because uh, I mean, this is where uh, you know, from this point here, a bunch of pathways and stairs and just a bunch of different walkways branch off from here that work their way down into the village below and I believe, at least looking on Google Earth and just satellite view trying to look at all the entrances around here, but I think this is the only entrance to uh, the top at least from the village. I mean, there's probably some side entrances, maybe not for the public, but at least from what it looks like on Google Earth, this is the main entrance, if not the only entrance for the public to get up to the very top. So yeah, that's more or less the reason I started or left this back end in this episode, just because that kind of is the entrance way and connects to all the rest of the part that I'll be working on in this episode. But uh, yeah, so I mean, this part here is just a small, um, more or less insignificant detail, but uh, I mean, in the real uh, Mont Saint Michel Abbey on t uh, on this little island here, there's a. I mean, the the space in between these buildings is very, very narrow, and there's a significant elevation changes, which I probably could have replicated to some extent in this, uh, you know, in this version of the build but it would have been a lot of work and I mean probably ultimately unnecessary just because it would have been hard to see if I actually built it as tight and you know small or the I should say as as narrow and tight as the walkways and places are between these buildings with the abbey and the whatever's on the side as is in real life so I left it definitely much more spacious uh, so just adding those steps there is trying to make it a tad bit uh, more smaller the area not so open but yeah. like I said not really a big thing there but uh so yeah back to working on the rear end of the uh, our abbey here just adding some steps that go down uh, basing this off the relocation. Uh, I didn't see that these steps actually like went out to the like outdoor outside the abbey, outside the walls, at least not immediately. I'm sure there's walkways inside the buildings that pop out somewhere outside of course, but I didn't see any uh, yeah, immediate obvious connections from those steps there to outside the walls, so I didn't add anything. Not to mention it I, I mean, one point later on the episode, I do do something like this, but uh, yeah, I can't really add doors or gates of any kind when I'm using those retaining walls, since, uh, I mean, yeah, I obviously can't just magically make a big old, you know, uh, walkway or door or window, whatever, up here, so I pretty much just stuck using a couple instances, some prop doors which uh, are closed. I mean, I prefer to find a way to leave some of these areas open, like walkways underneath the walls, 
and entrances but yeah it's kind of hard to do but yeah anyways but here's yeah just I don't know it kind of looked like a garden on Google Maps when I was looking at this some sort of like checkered grid pattern little area here which I did copy from real life but yeah just small details some flowers trees nothing much there but anyways yeah so this is the start of working on the bulk of the episode being I guess the middle tier of this uh, island because I mean I would consider it to be you know three levels you have your medieval village on the bottom with some of the houses working their way up to the middle tier which the middle tier is I don't know, I don't really know, a lot of it's just some walkways, there's a few, maybe, houses, uh, I don't know their real life purpose, but some larger buildings, for sure, in the middle tier, and then of course, the very top, there is the Abbey, so yeah, this episode, aside from what we just worked on a second ago, with the top there, is going to be mostly just the middle tier, working on the walkways that go uh, towards the village on the bottom and connect it to the abbey on top but yeah that's what the remaining part of this episode is really but uh so yeah here is the one instance of me trying to make some sort of walkway through these walls so i found i, I, don't, I don't know the name of the asset there but it is a network wall asset in which you could have a little entrance gate there which is nice uh, it's not the same, you know, stone texture, it has a walkway on top e even, so yeah, it's a little obviously different, doesn't completely match, but it's small there in the corner, so, and I mean really when you do see it, it doesn't stick out that much, but uh, I, I mean, I, that, I definitely needed some sort of open area where you can see an obvious connection, uh, you know, for walkways and people to walk. Because ideally, eventually, once I have some buildings, you know, the village at the bottom built, I would love to find a way to actually get people walking up here. And I mean, I'll definitely try my usual method of just, you know, placing paths down and then uh, upgrading those to invisible paths so you don't actually see anything, but of course people will still walk up there. But the problem I think I'll encounter when I try and do that is the fact that there's absolutely no road connections up here so i'll i already placed people generators which they're not doing anything right now because there's no road or even path connections going up there but uh, eventually when i do try and connect or connect paths to you know the top of the abbey there the lookout up there where i do have people generators i'm worried nothing's going to actually or not spawn but no no people are going to actually go up there because, like I said, I have no road connections, and all those people generators and parks, whatever you want to call them, they require a road connection for the people to get there. So, yeah, that's going to be one tricky thing I'm assuming I'll have to figure out. Uh, I mean, really, the only way I can think of is just trying to hide some tunnel road networks going inside the inside this little mountain, or not mountain, little island here, and then popping out somewhere inside a building, so you know, you don't actually see it, but cars can still actually drive up there. Uh, I don't know how good that's going to work, but uh, yeah, we'll see. I mean, if anyone knows of any mods that could help with that, because I'm not aware of any, I did find one mod, uh, I've, basically it allows you to disable all, all the uh, warning, not warning signs, but like, you know, no water connection, no electricity, no road connections, those type of pop-ups that appear above buildings. It allows you to disable those, and by the look of the description, I kind of thought that possibly it would uh, you know, also not just get rid of the notification, but also get rid of the problem itself. So even though there's no road connection, you know, people, cars, whatever, would still be able to go there. But I don't think that's actually the case, because Later on, when I do place a few buildings, start, when we start to work on part of the medieval village, uh, they're all empty. The, the commercial, the residential buildings, they're not filled up at all. No workers, no residents. And I did try and connect some roads, because I do have a road going from the mainland underneath the island here and popping out 
uh, somewhere to the left side of the screen, which you can't see, but yeah, uh, I do have a connection there. So I tried to connect the road from there to the pathways to see if anyone would walk, but no one did. So yeah, if you know any, I'm, any mods that could assist with that, I've looked around, but yeah, I haven't been able to find any. I'm guessing there's not, unfortunately, but yeah, let me know if there is. But anyway, so I guess just continuing this build here, this is, uh, so one area where I kind of simplified, you know, compared to the real life uh, uh, location is this path here. It's very wide. There's no stairs. It's just a gradual incline. Uh, compared to the real life Mont Saint Michel, this is a very pretty narrow walkway, which uh, with uh, walls on both sides. And uh, you can see there, I did add a retaining wall to make it a little, make it look a little nicer, a little more realistic. But the walkway itself is still very wide, and there's no steps or stairs. Which, I mean, honestly, I think it looks fine. The only unfortunate thing is, since I did use the retaining wall, I had to push the uh, ground, uh, you know, get rid of the ugly cliff texture that would pop out from the retaining wall with these terrain networks. So when you do that, and you place it next to or underneath any sort of road network, you get like an ugly, kind of like zigzag shadow texture or whatever on the network. So, for instance, on that path there, you can see it, which is a bummer. I mean, it's not a super big deal because I do have some trees there, and depending on what angle you're looking at or what area, it kind of looks like shadows from the trees and, you know, maybe the buildings. So, honestly, it doesn't look horrible compared to if it was a very open area. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Nothing much I can do about that, I know. So, leave a B for that, but, yeah, like I said, not the biggest deal. But anyway, so this is, you know, what I mentioned earlier being the area that I've considered the middle tier of this island. So this is one of the buildings that's just kind of randomly spaced out. There's nothing much around it, just open grass, uh, trees. I'm not sure what this is in real life or, you know, what its intentions once were, you know, because this island is very, very old. Uh, you know, pre-medieval era, even when it, I believe when it was first built, and with the abbey on top. But uh, yeah, I'm not sure what this building serves as in real life. But I it actually was able to find this on the workshop, and it matches pretty closely to the real life uh, exact building in this location here. So that was pretty cool. A little different. Uh, no steps leading up to the door as there are in real life, but. Uh, I couldn't go too crazy on the details because this episode would have been very long, even though it's almost 30 minutes, so a little longer than most episodes, but still not too bad. But yeah, just simple details here, some hedges, little fountain there in the middle, and yeah, more or less just leaving that be like that. So to the left of that building there is just what appears to be just a very empty dirt patch at least when looking at Google Earth. Uh, I'm not sure if that dirt patch is supposed to be grass, you know, during the right season. You know, it could was just when the satellite photo was taken, it could have been, you know, winter or whatever, who knows. I'm guessing it's not normally a dirt patch because it didn't look too good, but considering that is what was on Google Earth, that is what I did here. I just uh, lay some decals and it doesn't, I mean, it looks, I mean, I do make it look a little nicer. I add some hedges on the left side, but yeah, in a second. But uh, yeah, that's just some small trees to add into the very lush nature of this island. Um, yeah, it's, there are a ton, it's, it's true, there's, there's a ton of trees and just vegetation all around here. And Usually it's, you know, very easy to just lay down a bunch of trees, but honestly, when there's so many trees and a, and a diverse, uh, you know, different types of trees as well, but uh, it's, I don't know, it's a little different than most builds where you're trying to, you know, place in a ton of trees probably doesn't look that realistic, but in this case, it certainly is. But uh, yeah, anyways, here's what I was talking about a second ago, where it's just more or less a dirt patch 
um, just placing some different dirt decals and those hedges on the left there just some random detail who knows what that is really <laughs> but uh some trees on this little you know cliff edge poking out of the walkway but uh, other than that I just place some grass around you know the corners of the walls the rocks just you know adding some small details but uh so I guess uh, before any of you asked for one I went ahead and made an asset list for this series as well and I actually was able to do it through the Steam Workshop rather than how I did it with Berlin Noir being a Google Doc. So now it'll take you, it's like an actual workshop collection. So I used some method that uh, one of, uh, another fellow YouTuber told me to, about a, a while ago actually, but uh, Steger, he has a YouTube, uh, YouTube series where he builds some cool city skyline stuff himself. I would recommend checking him out. But thanks to him, I was able to uh, go into my main account where I'm not building this series since this is on another family shared account. But I was able to go into my main account and do some tricky little things to find out a way to actually make a workshop collection with, you know, this uh, save game. So that will be in the description, the link to the save game for you. Uh, in case you have any, you know, wondering what I'm using. But, uh, yeah, so anyways, this little odd thing here, whatever you want to call it, elevated garden, I guess. Um, <laughs> I, another thing based on Google Earth, uh, like I said, it looks kind of like an elevated garden. There was a door in the front, though uh, it was actually led to some stairs, which actually I'm guessing went up to this garden here. I didn't do that just because that was an extra detail, which you know, I was just like, whatever. That's a lot of work and for very small rewards, something you probably wouldn't be able to notice for the most part. So instead, I just did a lot of trees on top as there are in real life, but in, in, an added detail was some paths there and then just a bunch of bushes, flowers, stuff like that to actually make it more look, more look like a garden. And then, cause yeah, on Google Earth, if you were to look yourself, uh, it's, it's like it's I guess it's a garden but yeah it's not it's, there's not a lot of flowers it's mostly just some grass and big trees so I guess that's a garden but I definitely turned it into some sort of garden but uh yeah so uh, right here is where uh, I guess the start of the transition from just the walkways kind of open area into what will be part of the medieval village so I made this area definitely much larger than in real life there's in real life this small patch of grass there it's quite small narrow not so uh, I made mine quite uh, rectangular square whatever in shape though I do kind of shrink it down but still the amount of path in this area is much more than real life but uh I mean that's just kind of insignificant, not that big of a deal. But uh, I do add the stairs in the background, or not in the background, but uh, in the rear there that go up to the main. Or no, that no, yeah, those don't actually go up to the main path that descends from the abbey. Those go to another path just below the main path, which go to some parts or I guess back entrances that are elevated behind some buildings part of the village so yeah I this uh, or I guess in the next episode and frankly probably a fourth one as well because I'm guessing I won't be able to finish this in three episodes it'll probably be four maybe the fourth one will have some long uh, cinematics but uh yeah once the, the medieval village is going to be quite difficult to be honest and, and not difficult as in like hard to do I mean just more a lot of tedious, very tedious work. And, uh, yeah, that's why it's going to be most likely four episodes because there's going to be a ton of just narrow pathways with 
changes in elevation all over the place, tons of staircases and just paths leading all over the place. So that's, yeah, that's what's going to be difficult is just trying to make that and condense that into a watchable video where I'm not just laying really narrow paths for, you know, 20, 30 minutes. But uh, yeah, so as you can see here, we are starting on the medieval village, at least part of it, the highest point of it. Uh, I laid a bunch of buildings on a tiny little island, as you saw just a second ago, uh, just so I don't have to scroll through my uh, find it uh, feature there to, you know, find all these buildings. It's much quicker just having them already placed, where I can just use the uh, what was it Control T the mod, so I can just copy them and you know put them up here or use move it whatever it may be but uh yeah so as you can see that one staircase in the back as i mentioned leads to some narrow walkway beneath that main walkway that i mentioned but to a separate one in which yeah you can i guess enter those buildings houses whatever they may be from the rear uh I add some doorways later on just for some small details since you definitely need doorways if you're going to enter from the back. But uh, yeah, and I mean, when building this, I, I was really getting into the unique challenge of the elevation changes, having to do those narrow pathways, and definitely using procedural objects so I don't have to worry about the terrain, you know, getting screwed up from placing those buildings on different uh, levels because although actually a couple of the buildings I'm using for whatever reason their uh, footprint doesn't affect the terrain level at all it just places down and whatever the terrain is around it, it remains like that so that is kind of cool I don't have to turn all those buildings into PO which will certainly help if I'm able to find a way to connect these buildings to a road because since uh, any PO building is not is non-functional, unfortunately, so you know, if it's a you know commercial residential, you know, it's not going to be a commercial building. It's not going to be a residential building anymore. It's just a more or less just a big prop, I guess. It serves no function other than to appear aesthetically nice. But uh, so because of that, you know, it kind of sucks if you're trying to make a populated city because no one lives there or no one works there. So, like I said, a few of those buildings actually don't affect the terrain around them, so I should be able to use them at different terrain levels and not actually screw up the terrain heights around them, and while also maintaining the actual function of the building, whether it be for residential or commercial. Though still for a few, such as this one here, I do have to convert to PO. But that's alright. I mean, I don't want a ton of people walking around here anyways. I mean, I know in real life, looking at Street View on Google Earth, uh, I mean, there's a ton of tourists. I mean, I, I couldn't, I, I think, I believe I looked it up, there's only actually 50 residents, permanent residents on the island. Um, which, I don't know, makes sense. It's pretty small. It's definitely a touristy place. Not, I, would, I don't think I'd want to live there if I, you know, had the choice. But, uh, yeah, I don't know, it'd probably suck if you actually lived here and had hundreds, I don't know, who knows, probably a thousand tourists, over a thousand tourists a day visiting and, you know, probably not treating the area very nice since it's not their home. A little unfortunate, but, uh, yeah, I don't want a ton of people walking around, though I might not have any given, you know, the issue with the road connections. But, uh, so here I'm just adding another layer, another, uh, layer of elevation and uh, yeah not much to that other than just laying down prop uh, ploppable pavement and some stairs but uh, so this uh, little church here as you can see I moved the steeple into the higher elevation area there so you don't actually see it uh, but yeah reason being is because that is what it's like in real life there's just some I guess some small church built into the side of the uh, little island just the rear sticking out just as it, as it is there uh, it's pretty cool uh, I know uh, there's a uh, it's kind of similar I guess to a uh, city 
here in northern Arizona where I live. In Sedona, there's a church built into the rock that sticks out like that. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> I guess it's not the first church to be built like that. But uh, I don't actually detail any parts of the church in this episode since, as you can tell, we are getting pretty close to the end of the episode. Uh, really, the last part of this episode is just detailing this small little area here where there are some looks like houses sticking out of the higher ele higher elevated place behind it and just yeah I, I think these are actual houses this is probably where some of the you know 50 or so people actually live that are actually residents of Mont Saint Michel but yeah so as I said yeah we're getting quite close to the end um, so next week is gonna be exclusively really just working on this corner here and starting on the bulk of the medieval village and definitely or most likely some of the sea walls and castle walls that are on the sh uh, that go against the shore which I'm pretty excited for that that's gonna definitely tie this whole area together and also I'm really frankly looking forward to actually finishing something for you know once in my life playing this game I've never actually ever finished something in City Skylands and honestly I don't think many people can say they have as well at least people that play City Skylands heavily modded such as myself because frankly it's hard to do which is why you know something like a miniseries is something easily attainable and something I can finish but so anyways I will see you all next week for part three of Mont Saint Michel see you then